Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to look at two different devices. The first device we're looking at is the Microsoft Surface Book. This is the original Microsoft Surface Book, not the Surface Book 2, which came out quite recently. Um, this is original because I was looking for another laptop to replace my X1 Yoga. This is my Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga right here. And uh, this, the old Surface Book, the Surface Book 1, the first iteration is actually much, much cheaper and a much better value than the Surface Book 2. Because uh, if you're looking for the 13 inch, that is, right? The 15 inch Surface Book 2 has GTX 1060 graphics and it's a really, really good laptop. Um, of course, the original Surface Book never had a 15 inch, it was just a 13.5 inch. If you're looking for the Surface Book 2 13.5 inch, the only difference you'll get is a GTX 1050 instead of 965M. And honestly, the performance is pretty similar. And you'll also get a USB-C port. Here we have a mini display port instead. Um, so if you like to charge by USB-C, I guess that's a big deal. But for me, it's not really a big deal. And um, yeah, you get 8th gen uh, Core i7, Core i5, Core i7 processors, which is kind of a big deal because they're quad core and everything. But um, the price difference is the reason why I got the Surface Book 1. I got this baby for only $1,300 shipped and including everything. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Whereas the new Surface Book 2, the 13-inch version, will run you about um, $2,000 for the same specs. Mine has the 512 gig SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, and the 965 M, the performance base, by the way. So I think $1,300 is a really good deal for this, for this laptop. Now, the reason I'm, I'm replacing my X1 Yoga is uh, mainly because the uh, X1 Yoga is a great convertible and it has still the best display on the market. The, uh, the 1440p OLED display is still the best on the market in terms of contrast. Nothing can really beat that. But the battery life takes a huge hit because of it. And the brightness of the display isn't really that great either. So that's the downfall. I only get about like four hours of battery life on this thing, which is really, really not very good uh, considering the times that we live in. We're looking for at least at least like double that right so um let's compare here this is a 14 inch my 14 inch uh x1 yoga right here this is the 13.5 inch ms surface book microsoft surface book you can see it's smaller obviously it's 13.5 versus 14 inch and then i have my macbook pro 13 here which is smaller than the microsoft surface book because it is 13 inches and um yeah, it is, it's ways less. So in terms of the portability here, I'm going to compare all three, three of these laptops, by the way, um, just to show you the displays of all three of them. Because in my eyes, I think a lot of people will agree that these are probably three of the best laptop displays on the market. So I'm going to do some comparison there. Um, the MacBook Pro 13 is the most portable, but I would say it's actually the least functional because you only have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and that's about it. And um, in terms of spec, it's specs, it's probably the weakest out of these three. But it's also the most portable here, three pounds and 13 inches, so it's it's uh, small size wise. Then the surface, the Surface Book, Surface Book Two, by the way, is is exactly the same size, uh, dimensions, and weight, so not much change there. Surface Book and Surface Book Two, 13.5 um, inch. I like the three two aspect ratio of the display. The MacBook Pro has a 16 10 aspect ratio, which is really, really nice. Um, and it's a little bit more wider. 3-2 three, three aspect ratio is a little bit more vertical, showing a bit when I open it up. And uh, this is the 14 inch, the full H, um, not full HD, sorry, uh, 1400p. It's uh, 2560 by 1400, which is a 69 ratio. All right. Um, Let's go over the ports actually first. Okay, so this thing, really nice, really nice solidly built, just like the MacBook Pro. Um, it's got a camera on the back, I believe it's an eight megapixel camera because this can be detached and used as a tablet. And on the side here you get two USB ports and a full size SD card slot, something that you don't get on the MacBook Pro and you do get on the X1 Yoga but it's missing, but the X1 Yoga has a micro SD, whereas this one has a full size SD. Um, back you have nothing here and you have a MagSafe like connect connector here so this this is something that the MacBook Pro lacks right now the new MacBook Pros they lack the MagSafe connector you have to use a USB-C this the Microsoft Surface Book comes with a MagSafe type of connector where you just magnetically connect it like that and it's really nice 
um, and it stays in there pretty well, unlike the last generation MagSafe connectors for the Apple, which disconnects way too easily. And the aforementioned mini display port, which is replaced by USB-C in the newer Surface Book 2. And um, that's actually a pretty good variety of ports. It's missing Thunderbolt 3, of course, but um, hey, the new Surface Book 2 also misses Thunderbolt 3 too. So I guess <laughs> both of them lack Thunderbolt 3. Uh, I think Microsoft wanted to push their Surface Connect port instead, which is, I think, the same as Thunderbolt 3 uh, technology underneath. Um, but yeah, it's proprietary, and that's kind of a bummer. But hey, at least they have full-size USB ports, uh, USB-A ports, which uh, the MacBook Pro does not. The MacBook Pro does not have. All right, so let's open this baby up. All right, so now um, after using this for a bit. Uh, I can tell you that the keyboard on the Surface Book is, it's, it's just way better than the MacBook Pro. There's no comparison, right? The MacBook Pro keyboard is this flat, the flat butterfly keyboard, which we all love to hate. Um, Surface Book has a very, very nice clicky keyboard with a good amount of travel. And um, I would say it's even comparable to the ThinkPad's keyboard. Now, the ThinkPad has a really good keyboard as well. The ThinkPad keyboard is really good as well, but this one is almost as good. I don't like the arrow keys though. Um, this up and down arrows are too squashed, just like the MacBook. So the MacBook originally had this. The MacBook Pro has this type of key of uh, arrow keys as well. I don't like how the up and down arrows are really squashed. Um, the Lenovo, the ThinkPad keyboard does not have that. It's full size, up and down arrows, and um, yeah, otherwise. I say it's a pretty good keyboard. It's one of the best keyboards you can get on a laptop of this size. And uh, trackpad is surprisingly good as well. I would say this is better than the ThinkPad trackpad and probably the second best trackpad I've used on a notebook, second only to the MacBook Pro. The MacBook has probably the best trackpad out of all the different notebooks and laptops and it has had that for a while, but the Surface Book has probably the second best and probably the best on a Windows laptop. So I'm really impressed by the trackpad and the keyboard is pretty impressive as well. Now the displays, let's take a look at the displays. I think the Surface Book, the Surface Book display is really, really good. It's a super high res display, 3000 by 2000 because it's a 3-2 aspect ratio, which is better for reading web pages and browsing documents and stuff. And um, this is, oh. Whoops, I have to do FN. So yeah, FN plus delete is uh, brightness up, by the way. It doesn't really show it on the keys themselves, which is a little bit annoying. But um, yeah, let's go to full display brightness. And this, this display is the highest resolution out of these three laptops. And it's really, really good. Like, if you put a full res picture like I have, it's really, really crisp and clear. Um, the resolution is the highest out of all of these. The brightness is probably also the best out of all of these. The contrast is comparable to the MacBook Pro in my opinion, but slightly less than the OLED display. So let's open up the, um, the X1 Yoga here, which has a fingerprint reader by the way. That's something that the, that the MacBook Pro 13 without the touch bar lacks and the Surface Book lacks as well. I wish it has the, uh, the fingerprint reader here. Okay, now this displays at full brightness too, I believe. Okay, so the OLED screen here has the best contrast. However, the brightness just isn't quite up to par with the Surface Book. The Surface Book is brighter, um, and the OLED has better contrast, and this is, you know, it being the OLED display, not a lot of laptops on the market use OLED. Probably the best display technology on the market and um, there's very, very few laptops that have OLED. And the reason why is, one thing is, actually Lenovo did a good job with burn-in here. There's not really much burn-in because they, uh, they dim the pixels which are not being focused on. So that's to reduce the burn-in. And I read that in the ThinkPad book. However, the, um, the battery life really takes a big hit with the OLED display, and that's the problem here. If this, if this laptop had a good battery life, I think it would be, the display would be like perfect and everything. The, this laptop would be, um, would be pretty much perfect if the display took up less battery life. But OLED displays on the laptop, unfortunately, seem to take up a lot more battery life than IPS displays do. So 
as a result, this uh, the X1 Yoga doesn't last very long, uh, even though the display is like pretty freaking gorgeous. Um, Microsoft Surface Book battery should last uh, longer than that because it's uh, IPS technology. And let's look at the MacBook Pro. Okay, MacBook Pro display. Uh, let's take a look at. All right, so let's do uh, now. The MacBook Pro is the 13 inch. The Lenovo X1 Yoga is a 14 inch, and the Surface Book is a 13.5 inch. So this, the MacBook Pro display is gonna look, you know, obviously smaller and stuff. But yeah, at full brightness, this is full brightness right now. Um, it seems to me that the contrast between the th between the MacBook Pro and the Surface Book One slash Two, I guess I'm not sure if they changed the display, is similar. Um, but obviously, I think the Surface Book still has higher resolution, thus the images are sharper, and um, it has higher brightness as well. I think so. Yeah, comparing these three displays, I'm not sure how well you can see from this video, but. Um, the X1 Yoga has the best contrast because it's an OLED, but battery life takes a hit and it's not quite as bright. This one, the Surface Book, has the best resolution and therefore it's the sharpest and uh, brightness is really good. So it's probably one of the best displays out there for IPS. And the MacBook Pro, also one of the best displays for IPS, color gamut is really, really good and wide. And I think it's like comparable to Surface Book. So yeah, both these displays, two displays are probably the best. IPS displays on the market. All right, so now I'm gonna play a Justin Timberlake music video for all three of these, and this this music video is a, is mostly in black and white, so you guys can see um, the contrast and stuff better, or the contrast difference between these three displays. And um, I'm gonna turn the sound off because otherwise the it's, you know copyright infringement and stuff. Although I have to say that the MacBook Pro definitely has the best speakers out of all of these. Um, Surface Book and X1 Yoga is about similar. Uh, I think the Surface Book might be a little bit more still. But let's go ahead and um, play all three of these videos. Okay, let's go. All right. So, all right. So maybe you guys can see the difference better here. Um, okay, so obviously I think the X1 Yoga is the best looking out of the three because it's using OLED technology, so the contrast for the blacks, you know, is gonna be the deepest. That's pretty obvious. However, the uh, MacBook Pro versus the uh, Surface Book is pretty interesting. I think they are both, they both have really, really good contrast. Uh, it's a little bit different. I think the con, it's just the profiles seem a little bit different, um, but they're both really, really good. All right, you can see the X1 Yoga just kind of blows them all away with um, those perfect deep blacks. But the Surface Book has a supposed 1600 to one contrast ratio, so that should be pretty good. And the MacBook Pro, obviously, Apple spent a lot of time on that display as well, the P3 white collar gamut. So you guys can judge for yourself, but um, in terms of IPS displays, I think it's quite similar between the MacBook Pro and Surface Book. Can't really call one a winner. Um, although the Surface Book is high resolution, that's about it. Um, in terms of contrast and color gamut, I think they're both really good. And uh, obviously X1 Yoga has the best contrast, but um, brightness isn't quite up there and it takes a hit in battery life. So yeah, that's the comparison between uh, the displays. And in terms of the specs, uh, Surface Book has the best out of all of them because it has the first one, well, the Surface Book 1 has the NVIDIA GTX 965M, which means you can play games and stuff on it. Um, the MacBook Pro has Iris graphics, which are better than plain integrated graphics, but it's still not the same as dedicated. And the X1 Yoga has dedicated gra has uh, sorry integrated graphics, so it's not going to be able to compete with either of them. So um, yeah, in terms of the specs here, the Surface Book is going to be the best out of all of them. And in addition, the Surface Book is also really really versatile. I think this laptop and my ThinkPad TP25, the ThinkPad 25, 
are probably the most versatile laptops you can get on the market. Um, the fact is, yeah, great keyboard, great uh, touchpad. Uh, speakers are okay. It's not, you know, the best. It's not quite as good as MacBook Pro, but they're 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 pretty decent. The display is one of the best three displays on the market. See, I have here the three best displays on the market right here. So this is the top three in displays. Um, 3 to aspect ratio is great. 965M GPU on here, so you can play games with it. It's not going to be as powerful as the 1070 or 1080, but it can definitely play games better than your typical like integrated or even 940M or something like that, right? Um, I think still better than the MX150 as well. And um, yeah, specs are really, really good. Uh, it's, it's a Core i7. It's not a 45 watt GPU, uh, CPU, but it's you know you can't really expect that in a laptop this size anyway. Um, but it, at least it's not a Core M, right? And uh, it's convertible, which means you can flip it over, just like I can with my Yoga here. So my Yoga can just flip it over like this. The MacBook Pro cannot flip over at all, and it doesn't have a touch screen like these two, so it's a little bit less versatile. Um, but yeah, I can flip this one over. What I can do with the Surface Book to get into this mode is a little bit extra, but I think it's fine. Some people might not find it as convenient as just flipping over the uh, the computer like the X1 Yoga, but it doesn't take that much time. All you have to do is long press this button here. Okay, and then it says ready to detach and you can detach it and you can use it this as a tablet. So this is a, like a 1.6 pound tablet right now, um, which is you know, about as light as the uh, original iPad Air. Um, not as light as the new iPad Air, but uh, about as light as the original. And then you just attach it to the base, like here. There. And uh, voila, it is in the X1 yoga mode now. So, or the stand mode, I should say. Um, takes a little bit, like maybe like a few seconds more time to do it, but I mean, it's fine. I mean, you're not gonna use this mode that much anyways. Um, so I would say the X1 Yoga might be a little more convenient to convert into this form, but it's going to be also heavier because you have to carry it as a complete laptop. It's 2.8 pounds. This one, detach the display um, the, as a tablet. If you want to use it as a tablet, it's much lighter. And if you want to, you know, use it in this mode, it just takes a few more minutes to do. So it's, it's much more versatile. And of course, playing games and stuff, it's going to be much, much better on this laptop as well. All right, so this is trying out a game on the Surface Book. This is Quick Champions. I have all the settings set to high, VSync turned on, and this is on the full resolution, 3000 by 2000. And um, also one thing I forgot to mention is that Surface Book has an infrared camera here, two cameras. One is a normal webcam, the other is the infrared camera, so you can log in with Windows Hello using just your face, which is awesome. Another thing is there is, um, power button and volume controls up right on the display because it can turn into a tablet so that's why you gotta have it there and that's why it's not on the the keyboard here the keyboard does have media controls and um, slightly different layout than normal keyboards but anyways yep uh, let's play a game of quick champions and see how it fares with the 965m in it uh, yeah let's do deathmatch switch here Oh, actually, this is, uh, oh, right. All right, let's search on Server Connect. Oh, actually, let's go play a custom game here. Deathmatch. Okay, let's do it. All right, so this is Quick Champions, and I have it on 2000p full resolution right now on high settings. You can see I'm getting 63 FPS. Uh, which is really really good and uh, yeah this is definitely playable um, I'm not playing with anyone right now but um, just to guy just to show you guys quick champions is a recently re released game by Bethesda so it does require somewhat of a good GPU to run and especially on a game like this which requires at least 60 FPS because um, it's a first person shooter and a deathmatch one at that so uh, definitely, <laughs> it's a very fast paced one. So definitely you need to have good performance here. It's a lightning go, ooh, okay.
but yeah, runs perfectly fine. Stays pretty steady at 63 FPS actually, which is uh, impressive. Yep, everything is very, very smooth. No lag, it's nothing. All right, guys, so um, yeah, this computer can definitely play games. It's not gonna play the latest and greatest games at the ultra settings or whatever, but it can definitely play pretty recent games at uh, reasonable settings, like medium to high settings, and uh, get pretty respectable frame rates. So uh, yeah, that's uh, gaming on the uh, Microsoft Surface Book here. So yeah guys, all in all I think the Microsoft Surface Book and Surface Book 2 are all around great laptops, they're very very versatile. Um, compared to my ThinkPad 25, which is my other versatile laptop, um, this, do, this has a glossy screen, which I don't like because there's a lot of glare, you can see reflections on it, I'd prefer it if it was a matte screen like the ThinkPad. Um, the other thing is, uh, yeah, this doesn't have as many ports. Um, it doesn't have HDMI, for example. Uh, Thunderbolt 3 obviously doesn't have that. Uh, native Ethernet, it doesn't have that either. But um, it does have, you know, like the standard USB, and it does have a display out. So it definitely has more useful ports than like a MacBook Pro, I guess. Uh, so you don't need to use dongles most of the time. But um, yeah. Uh, another thing is uh, removable battery doesn't have that, only the ThinkPads have that, and uh, the keyboard obviously is not as good as the, the ThinkPad 25's retro, 7 row retro keyboard, but everything else on this computer is better, I think uh, it is definitely um, more modern looking, sleeker looking, whatever. Uh, can be detachable, can be, you can is convertible, you can use it separately as a tablet, resolution is much higher, uh, 2000 versus uh, 1080. Um, and has the GTX 965 in it. The new ones have 1050 in it, which is obviously much better than the 940M and the TP25. Um, and uh, yeah, so all around uh, great computer, I think, and so far uh, I have been pleased. So this, this is my Microsoft Surface Book, and it's probably going to be one of my most useful all around computers. And uh, that's it. You can pick it up right now on eBay for about $1,300 or $1,500 for a used one and uh, get top specs with it. If you want the Surface Book 2, you can probably pay about 2k and um, I don't pay that much of an upcharge just for the 8th gen CPUs and the USB-C. I don't, I don't think those are big enough upgrades, but I mean for some people maybe it's worth 500, 600 bucks, but not for me. I'd rather just get a used generation 1, um, which I think is a really really good value right now. Um, yeah, this is like a fourteen hundred dollars on e thirteen hundred fourteen hundred on eBay. You get five twelve gig SSD, nine sixty five M Core i seven, sixteen gigs of RAM. Um, yeah, it's all top end specs and uh, mostly the same capability as the Surface Book two. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Surface Book one and uh, one of the most versatile computers I think you can get on the market today. Yeah, you can even take pictures on it. How many laptops you can take pictures with it, right? Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Another thing I want to mention is uh, the magnetic charger here. Really, really useful. I don't know why Apple got rid of the MagSafe, but anyways, you have it on here. Um, the 3.2 display here is a lot better for reading documents and uh, doing productivity work. Unlike the ThinkPad, which I have, which are all 16.9. Um, <laughs> that's really ironic because they're supposed to be business laptops. But yeah, uh, love the 3.2 display. Also, um, I mentioned the lack of ports on this thing like um, compared to the ThinkPads and other notebooks well you can get this handy dandy uh, USB 3 dock right here from HP this is called the HP travel dock right here um, I highly recommend this thing I got this for only 50 bucks on eBay come on okay I got this for only 50 bucks on eBay um, it is a lot smaller a lot more portable and a lot more convenient to use than the Thunderbolt 3 docks that you get which are mostly, well you can get a USB-C hub or something like that uh, which are small as well but you see those Thunderbolt 3 hubs uh, docks on uh, Amazon and eBay are really really expensive and they require a separate power charger this thing does not need a separate power charger and uh, this little USB dongle thing plugs 
right into the right into here so it's super portable gives you HDMI VGA port that's really nice for us uh, who have those legacy ports um, support projectors and stuff native uh, this is full full-size Ethernet right here RJ45 and two USB ports here of course this is a USB 3 so it can be plugged into any computer which uses USB 3 um, which basically means it's giving your computer one more USB port since you're using another one uh, but still that's nice and uh, all your video outs and um, gigabit Ethernet needs so uh, highly recommend this one if uh, the Surface Book does not satisfy me in terms of ports I always have this handy dandy travel dock to bring with me and it it works with anything with a USB 3 port so um, that's pretty much almost every laptop except for the the MacBook Pro and the new Dell and um, the new Dell XPS 13 but everything else has a USB 3 port so yeah this thing's super useful super handy and portable and light and um, I like this a lot better than the Thunderbolt 3 docks that you get because those require those are bigger require their own separate power supplies and stuff and don't really give you that much more ports so um, yeah, that's it. Um, leave me a comment, guys, if you have any questions about the Microsoft Surface Book. That's it. Thanks for watching.